Is South Carolina a good place to retire? Today I'm going to share with you why South Carolina might be a good place for you to retire. But I'm going to give you a balanced perspective because just like in life, well, not everything is perfect. Now, there are many things to consider when thinking about retiring to South Carolina, like the cost of living, taxes, healthcare, cost of homes, the weather, and of course, active adult communities. And I'm going to explore each of these topics with you in this video. So stick around and at the end of the video, I will tell you how you can get your free copy of Retire Y'all, which is a guide to retiring in South Carolina written by Adam Curran, who's a financial planner right here in Charleston, and he specializes in retiring in South Carolina. Plus, when you get the book, I'll be sure to give you a bonus as well. First is the cost of living. This is what Patch.com had to say about retiring in South Carolina. But first, here is something to keep in mind when comparing the states to live in according to Patch. Because cost of living and life expectancies differ from state to state, expected spending throughout the retirement varies as well. States with higher retirement spending estimates tend to have either higher average cost of living, longer average life expectancies, or both, and vice versa. Now, in South Carolina, the average retirement spending stands at an estimated $900,000 plus, which is the 12th lowest in the country. Next, let's take a look at what UpNest says about the cost of living here. With a population of just over 5 million people, South Carolina is the 40th largest state, which means we don't have a very dense population, and that translates into a lot less hustle and bustle, especially around the more metropolitan areas. Not only is South Carolina a more affordable state to live in, it's also great for retirement. In fact, a survey by Retirement Living ranked South Carolina as the fourth best place to retire in the US. They went on to say, many people choose to live in South Carolina for its affordable general cost of living. The cost of living in South Carolina is 11.5% lower than the US average, and home appreciation is up 11.4% just in the last year. Now, looking at another survey, this time from the market research firm Top Data, South Carolina was ranked as the number six place to retire according to their recent study, which was conducted to help individuals find the place where they would be most happy following their working years and into their transition to retirement. Their study revealed that the category with the highest relevance in retirement was affordability, followed by entertainment, healthcare, safety, and wellness. And just a side note here, when it comes to the cost of living, the one question I'm asked often is, what can I expect as far as utility expenses go? If you live in a bigger city such as Columbia, utilities may be slightly more expensive than if you lived in a remote suburb. For example, for about a 915 square foot home in Columbia, the basic utilities of electricity, heating, cooling, water, garbage, they run about $168 a month. In Greenville, you'll pay a little over $92 for basic utilities for the same size home, which is considerably less. For internet services, expect to pay about $56 per month. So to recap, UpNest puts South Carolina at the number four spot and Top Data puts it at the number six spot. Now, let's look at taxes. Our friends over at Kiplinger rank our state as the most tax-friendly state. South Carolina extends some real Southern hospitality to retirees by offering a charming collection of income tax breaks. To start, Social Security benefits are completely exempt, as well as military retirement income. In addition, taxpayers aged 65 or older can exclude up to $10,000 of retirement income. Seniors can also deduct $15,000 from other taxable income like retirement plans. And by the way, it's $30,000 for joint filers. Plus, the top income tax rate is going down, beginning with the 2023 tax year and each year thereafter until equal 6%, the top rate will decrease by 0.01% if the general fund reserves are projected to increase by at least 5% 
in the physical year that begins during that tax year. Whoo! By the way, voters have spoken and the bill did pass by a two to one margin. So everyone in this state is going to start paying lower taxes. One more piece of tax information that you should be aware of is that if you're 65 or older and retiring in South Carolina, you are not required to file a South Carolina income tax return if you're a South Carolina resident, age 65 or older, and your filing status is single, qualifying widow, widower, or head of household, and your gross income is less than the federal gross income filing requirement plus the age 65 and older deductions. Moving on, it's time to take a look at health care here in the Palmetto State. And mm, there's really no way to sugarcoat this, but South Carolina ranks 17th worst in the country according to 24-7 Wall Street. I guess I could have said that we actually rank right up there in the bottom half of all of the states, but let's not go there either. A fact's a fact. And speaking of facts, the Health Sciences of South Carolina has issued a report in which it states that South Carolina is one of five states that has shown the greatest improvement in health care quality, according to a new report from the research arm of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The state snapshot report is the latest annual examination of state-by-state -state quality data. The report summarizes health care quality in three dimensions, care type, care setting, and clinical condition. So it seems like things may be improving, and in my opinion, they apparently know there is room for improvement and they seem to be taking corrective measures towards that. Now, here's another report, and this time it's from U.S. News & World Report. It evaluated 89 hospitals in South Carolina. Eight meet the high U.S. News standard and are ranked in the state. U.S. News also ranked hospitals in Charleston, Charlotte, Columbia, and in Greenville, the metro areas, the number one hospital in South Carolina is MUSC, the Medical University of South Carolina, with its main campus in Charleston, and it has more than 100 outreach sites and 10 hospitals in the state. Something else also to be aware of is that South Carolina residents are no longer required to have health insurance under the Affordable Care Act also known as Obamacare. South Carolina state law also does not mandate individual insurance or require employers to offer group health plans to their employees. And for you veterans out there, there are 12 VA community-based outpatient clinics throughout South Carolina. Okay, let's swing on over to the real estate market here in South Carolina. And of course, it goes without saying that this market is still in a state of flux and it is not reacting the way that many people had anticipated it to do so, so far in 2023. In December, Zillow released the study that showed that out of 15 metro areas in South Carolina, that seven are projected to see price gains. And that's between November of 2022 and November of 2023. In the state's largest city, which is Charleston, it is projected to stay flat and the remaining metro areas are expected to see price drops in the range of 0.1 to 3.8 percent. And I could tell you that personally, I've represented two buyers in the Charleston area and negotiated both of their home purchases down by $25,000 from the seller's asking price. Now, please consume and digest this information carefully while well, given its source. Taking a look back at recent history, here are some key takeaways from what happened in 2022. The typical home value in South Carolina was $301,000 plus dollars with a one-year value change of 11% up. To put that into perspective, the typical home value in the United States in 2022 was $356,000 in change, with a value change of plus 3.5%. In South Carolina, 23% of the sales 
were over the list price and 54.5% of the sales were under the list price. And there was a median days on the market until pending of 20 days. Now, the good news and the good news. The U.S. housing market has begun to recover after hitting a low point in the second week in November. We're not out of the woods yet, but some home buyers are coming off the sidelines. Some agents are even reporting that bidding wars are back in some markets, including Seattle, Central Florida, and Richmond, Virginia. The reason for this? Well, home buyers have started to return as power dynamics shift towards their favor. Buyers have acclimated to the 6% mortgage rate, which feels like a relief after watching affordability erode as rates surpass 7% in the fall. Some buyers are even scoring a rate that starts with a 5, and that's an important psychological threshold, while others are opting for an adjustable rate mortgage or getting a rate buy-down as a seller concession. Our buddies over at Redfin have just posted this on their site this week. And I quote, mortgage applications are up 28% from November as the average 30 year fixed mortgage rate has declined to 6.15% from its peak in November of 7.08%, the largest 10 week decline since 2009. That has sent the typical home buyer's mortgage payment down 10% or about $180 since the fall. Pending home sales rose 3% in December from November on a seasonally adjusted basis. The first month over month increase in 14 months. So this is good news if you've been holding off buying or looking to retire in South Carolina. Lending rates are becoming more affordable and sellers are loosening up and playing nicer with potential buyers. The long range outlook is that the housing market will likely continue to thaw in the upcoming weeks and months, especially if inflation and mortgage rates ebb a little bit further. But there's still a long way to go. Some neighborhoods will have some fierce bidding wars going on, while others, well, they'll hear crickets. The market is warming up, but it is still cold compared to the pandemic home buying frenzy and even pre-pandemic times. It may never again hit the meteoric sales of 2021. Next up, the weather. Ah, uh, yes, the weather. To me, there is nothing more rewarding about living here in South Carolina than the weather. There are four seasons here in South Carolina, and the weather was one of the biggest reasons why I moved here. Yes, it is hot during the summer. It cools down in the fall, it can get a bit chilly in the winter, and we can get an occasional snowflake or two, and we may need to cover up our landscape plants, but that rarely lasts more than a few days. And yes, gas fireplaces and fire pits are a thing here. And then, of course, there is spring. Ah, uh, yes, spring. My second favorite time of the year, right behind summer. I just like it warm. Flowers start to bloom, foliage reappears, and the waters in the Atlantic start to rise. Just to give you an idea of the average temps across the state, let's take a look at the upstate first. That's where towns like Clemson and Greenville are. The average high temp there is 78 and the low is 56. In the Midlands where Columbia and Aiken are, the average high is 78 and the average low is 56. In the PD, the Myrtle Beach area, the average high is 73 with an average low of 52. And in the low country, that would be where Charleston and Hilton Head are, the high average is 76 and the low is 56. So you can see the average temps moderate throughout the year. The nice thing for most folks who live here is that you do still get your sweater weather and your bathing suit weather. Treetops is a gated community exclusively for the active adult life. It's surrounded by nature, and is inspired by endless possibilities. Treetops resort style amenities are nestled into a natural setting. There is a treehouse club and pool pavilion that provide plenty of opportunities for homeowners to gather, play, and celebrate. It's located less than 45 minutes from the uptown side of Charlotte, and Treetop provides the perfect balance of resort style living 
with big city entertainment and dining. Heading to the Lowcountry is where you'll find Sun City Hilton Head, a Dell Webb community. Sun City Hilton Head was awarded the number one active adult community by 55places.com back in 2001. And within those private gates, you'll find resort style amenities and activities, including three golf courses, multiple fitness centers, and pools, and a performing arts theater. Sun City Hilton Head is far and away the state's largest community with over 10,000 homes. For those looking to have all the conveniences right in their neighborhood, this area offers up a 45 acre town square with resident only amenities and just beyond the gates, there's shopping, restaurants, grocery stores, and healthcare, all within a five minute drive. My next choice is Latitude Margaritaville, also in Hilton Head. The Margaritaville brand is huge in the retirement living community with three campuses in the Southeast. The Hilton Head area community will not disappoint. And with construction ongoing, owners can build a new home to suit their preferences. Residents can choose between single family homes and attached homes. And all homes are built through the trusted Minto Development Company, as with the other two Margarita settlements here in the Southeast. There are sporting courts, there's a band shell, there's kayaking, and an on-site retailer are just a few of the amenities and activities here. And they also have a pet spa and dog park for your furry family members that may enjoy the retirement life just as much as you do. Now, here's how you can get your free copy of Retire Y'all by Adam Curran. He's a financial planner here in South Carolina. Simply go down to the description below. I put a link there and just tell me where I need to send your free book. And as a bonus, I'm also going to include my free Charleston and the Low Country Relocation Guide. Now, if you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about retiring in the great state of South Carolina, then you will want to watch both of these videos right here. Are you trying to decide between retiring in South Carolina and North Carolina? Well, today I'm going to share with you reports from three major publications who have ranked South Carolina and North Carolina in a head-to-head -head comparison for the best place to retire. And I think that you might be as surprised as I am as to who won the title of the best Carolina to retire. Plus, I'm also going to debunk one of the biggest myths about these two states. Hi, I'm Keith Lucas, Broker Associate at eXp Realty and a 21-year veteran of the real estate industry. If this is your first visit to my channel, welcome to my channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you haven't done so already, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that way you're notified the next time I drop a new video. There is a rivalry between these two states and it is truly legit. It even spills over into bragging rights for the best place to retire. Now, I might be a bit biased because, well, after all, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, but I wanted this to be a fair comparison. So I've gone out to the three big boys who ranked the best places to retire in the country and researched what they had to say. And here's their findings. So let's take a look at our friends over at WalletHub. They have ranked South Carolina number 12 for places to retire with a total score of 53.57. It also had an affordability ranking of three with a quality of life ranking of 38 and healthcare cost of 35. Now, when you compare that to North Carolina, North Carolina ranked number 18 with a 52.06 total score and an affordability rating of 10. 
the quality of life rating coming in at 26 and healthcare coming in at 38. Now, the numbers that are represented here are from zero to 100, and the lower the score, the better the overall livability for the retirees are in that state. And not for nothing, but our friends over at WalletHub have ranked Charleston the number two place to retire, and the next best ranking for North Carolina cities was Raleigh, which came in at <clears throat> 26. Hey, I said I was biased. Next, I went over to check out to see what Credit Karma had to say about the best state to retire. And this is what I found out. South Carolina ranked overall number 19. And it had an overall score of 14.39. The cost of living was ranked at 22 with a senior living ranking of 35. And the annual senior health care cost ranking was nine. So again, zero to 100 are the parameters. And the closer to zero you are, the better off you are. Now, compared to North Carolina, they came in ranking at number 32 with an overall score of 15.79. The cost of living ranking was 23. The senior living ranking was 40. And the annual senior health care cost ranking was at six. So here again, South Carolina takes the win from Credit Karma. And lastly, I looked at bankrate.com and this is what they had to say. But this time, things have seemed to have flipped around a bit. North Carolina came in at number 11 versus South Carolina at number 16. So here are the rankings according to Bankrate. North Carolina is ranked number 11. It has an overall score of 23.4, an affordability ranking of 11, a wellness ranking of 37, cultural ranking of 27, and a weather ranking of 29, and a crime rate of 32. Now, swinging over to South Carolina, they put it at number 16 with an overall score of 24.3, an affordability rating of 9, wellness rank of 40, cultural rank of 21, the weather rank is 33, and their crime rate was at 46. Okay, so there you have it by the numbers. And it seems that South Carolina has edged out North Carolina as the more favorable place to retire, according to these reports. If you would like a free copy of my Charleston in the Low Country Relocation Guide, I've put that in the link down below in the description. Now, to debunk that myth about these two states, during my research into the best Carolina to retire in, I kept seeing statements that said, because of its geographical size, South Carolina was more densely populated than its cousin to the north. Um, wrong. So here are the facts. North Carolina is twice the geographic size of South Carolina, and its population is approximately 10 million people where South Carolina is half the geographic size, its population is approximately 5 million. So how can South Carolina be more densely populated? It is half the geographic size with half the population. Therefore, they're equal when it comes to the state's density. It's like saying, what weighs more, a ton of gold or a ton of feathers? So what does this mean if you're looking to retire in one of the Carolinas? If you're looking for a state with more hustle and bustle and bigger cities, North Carolina is likely a good choice. If you're after a more small town feel and Southern charm, then South Carolina would be ideal. What's your opinion on the best place to retire? Drop your vote in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think is the best place to retire. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper into the best states to retire in, I have put a link to WalletHub's best states to retire in in the description below. Thank you for your time today. I hope this helps you in your decision on where to retire. And as always, if you have any questions, just let me know. I've put my email address in the description below. Oh, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so and also hit that bell so that way you're notified when I drop my next video. I'd appreciate it. Take care and I'll see you soon. Hey y'all, I hope you all are doing well. Thanks so much for joining us today. 
as I said before, we have a very special guest with us, and he's right here, Mr. Adam Curran. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me, Keith. Oh, man, it's such a pleasure to have you here. You know, we talked off camera before and just talked about the different nuances of what takes place here in South Carolina. And and we both really work almost in the same market, you know, people that are looking to retire to the state of South Carolina. And and you've written a book that really just addresses that and, and how they can kind of formulate their strategy going forward for retirement here in South Carolina. That's right. Yeah, we, we literally wrote the book on retiring in the state of South Carolina. And basically, the book talks about all the things that a South Carolinian retiree needs to get right in order to live an abundant retirement. And some of those topics are kind of catch-alls that you know everyone in the entire nation needs to get it right. But South Carolina in particular has a unique set of circumstances that I think present challenges and opportunities for people who are going to move down here and, and live their golden years in, in this wonderful state. So I'd love to go over each and every one of those topics. One of, the, one of the chapters in the book is on real estate, which you've probably forgotten more about real estate than I'll ever know. <laughs> Well, um, I forget a lot of things like why I walked into the room, but um, <laughs> the book that, that Adam is talking about is called Retire Y'all. And I think you have a copy there, don't you? I do. Yeah. Put yeah, it right we'll, on the we'll, screen here. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll put that up on the screen too. And um, actually, Adam, that book, you don't charge anybody for that book. You're happy to give it to them. It's kind of a, an 80 page business card. Yeah. And, and our take is, and it sounds like you've got a similar thing with the content that you create. Um, just push out as much little nuggets of wisdom and knowledge as humanly possible, knowing darn well that not every single person who watches your YouTube videos or reads our book is going to decide to work with us. Um, but you know, um, if you can give them one little piece of, of information that lends itself to them living a slightly better retirement or lends itself to them buying a house in the right side of town or uh, at the right price point, um, you know, our work is done and we know that we'll be rewarded in the long run by just giving people of ourselves as, as much as possible. So we do give the book away for free. It's part of our marketing budget. Uh, and whether you work with us or you, or you do it yourself or you work with your advisor, who's your golfing buddy, uh, we don't really give a rip. Just take us up on the free book offer and just do us a favor. If we send you a book, give it to a friend or family member who's also considering uh, pulling the trigger and putting their two weeks notice in and uh, hopefully down here in South Carolina. Although I don't know, you know, all of us damn Yankees, as they're called, I'm sure you've, you've just described the difference <laughs> between a Yankee and a damn Yankee on your radio show. You know, Yankees uh -huh. come down here and just kind of eat shrimp and grits and play golf and go back home. But damn Yankees come down here and never leave. Um, you know, there, even though we've only been here, you mentioned 10 years and I've been 12, don't you still yet kind of go, oh, we don't want all these people retiring down here and ruining our wonderful state, even though we're part of the darn problem. Yeah. Yeah. We get blamed for that quite often, you know, the traffic and, you know, inventory of homes and things like that. That's always our fault. But you know something you mentioned, you mentioned something just a second ago, which was, you know, little nuggets of, of information. And, and there's something that caught my eye in your book when I was reading it that I just want to share right now with everyone, because, so many people that I meet, they are in the process of moving here at some point. Okay. They may be three months away, six months away, a year away or more, and, and that's okay. And one of the discussions we always talk about is how they're going to finance their property here. And a lot of people will want to pay cash, which is, you know, totally a, a, an option. And it's a good option, but this paragraph that, that you have in your book, let me just take a second and read it here. It's, the key to good tax planning is always to be a step ahead of the IRS and the South Carolina Department of Revenue. Make sure you have multiple buckets of money with different tax, taxable statuses and look at your tax profile every year to be sure that you're converting as much money from qualified sources into more tax-friendly buckets. This way, you're better prepared to face an uncertain tax environment in the future. And to me, that speaks volumes because like I was just saying a minute ago, people are coming here and they want to pay cash. They have money, but that is all they've got. And then they're, they're not looking at the bigger picture where they can put money into different buckets and they can generate income 
and it can be moved around. You explain that a little bit in your book on how you can do that. So when you hit certain thresholds, maybe it might be an age, maybe it might be um, a certain type of account, you can move that to minimize your tax burden. Yeah, the, the tax code is three times the size of the King James Bible. And if you read it at an average reading pace for one hour of a day, you wouldn't be even be able to read it in one year's time. And guess what they do at the end of the year? They change all the rules and change all the tax code on you. One thing that I hold out hope, though, is smart money people, smart tax people are always going to be a step or two ahead of the IRS. And the IRS is an acronym for IROB seniors because they prey on the complacent. Uh, and too many of us get our tax guidance by uh, going into our CPA or our tax preparer's office sometime around March or if you're a slacker, early April, and you drop all your stuff off on their desk. Uh, and at that season of their life, they are so overworked and underpaid and inundated, they're no longer in the business of strategizing and showing people how to avoid taxes. All they're doing is putting numbers in boxes. Uh, so it's almost like if you were to go uh, fight a battle, you know, do you want the guy who's who's prepared and a specialist at, at, at avoiding fatalities and and injuries? Or do you want the person who's just really good at counting the dead and wounded? Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of our tax preparers, that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, you need to be strategic. You need to be forward thinking. And I, I think, you know, South Carolina in particular uh, is a very, very tax friendly state for retirees. Just look at property taxes. It's probably one of the lowest property taxes in the entire nation. We've got tremendously low gas taxes. We don't tax your social security. We don't tax a lot of your uh, retirement benefits. Uh, and I think sometimes people are way too focused on the income tax, right? So you'll ask people, oh, well, Florida is a really tax-friendly state for retirees. Right. You go to Florida, look at your property tax in Florida. Look at your, uh, you got to pay money to cross bridges and ride on highways in Florida. So it's more than just the income tax. Uh, there's a lot of facets to, to tax code in general. And, and we like to pride ourselves on people who actually know how it works. We know all the little levers and, and hooks and things that you can, you, you can consider using to keep your tax bill low. It's a big thing. You know, we were talking off air. A lot of people you're speaking with are saying, I'm on a fixed income, right? And and I I I need to make sure my expenses are low. You know, if you actually quantify your expenses at the end of the year, you'll probably find one of the biggest pieces of the pie chart is your taxes that you're paying, whether it be through sales tax or property tax and um income tax. So uh, it's a, it's a worthwhile pursuit. I think it was John Maynard Keynes who said the only intellectual pursu pursuit worth anything is the avoidance of taxes. And we pride ourselves on that. Yeah, well, speaking of Florida, the other revenue generator down there, of course, is the uh, traffic lights, the, the stop light cameras. <laughs> yeah. I, keep those out of South Carolina, please. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got a friendly bill from the folks down in Florida not too long ago telling me that. And, you know, the amazing thing is they actually give you a link to a video. It's like, wow, you could see yourself going through the red light. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. But, you know, one of the things that, that I get questioned a lot about here, and I'm not a tax advisor, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a, a, an accountant or a CPA or anything like that. And the best advice I can give you is to speak to your CPA or financial advisor, whoever it is. But when people, you know, when they come here and they do come down, especially after COVID with buckets of money. Okay. They've sold their house. They may have been living it for 20 years. It appreciated 40% in the last two years. They've gotten a lot of money and they're like, yeah, I want to like throw 50% down on my house or 75% down on my house. And we have this conversation because, you know, the, the question I have to ask is why? And, and the response I get more times than any is, well, you know, I want the lowest interest rate that I could possibly get. And I really need to have a conversation at that point with them that, you know, once you get to that 30% level of, of putting 30% down, your interest rate really doesn't improve. I don't care how good your credit score is. I don't care anything, you know, any, about anything else. That's about as low as it's going to get. The only thing it will do is lower your monthly payment because you will have a smaller mortgage. So, you know, when you can take your money and you can save it for your retirement, where it can be reinvested, you're gaining more money from that that you can actually use to live off of. And, you know, one of the things that, that you spoke about 
was, you know, that untimely death thing. Okay. You, and also being the richest person in the graveyard, you really don't know when you're going to go meet your maker and you can be saving and scrimping and, 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 or maybe not doing anything at all. And all of a sudden, boom, you're done. Um, you don't know you're done, but you're done. And, you know, maybe you have some family members that are left over and now they need to take a, take over what you have kind of set up for them on the financial side of life. Yeah. You, you, you touched on a couple things there. One is the, the, the mortgage conundrum and I've got kind of a unique take on this and, um, you know, mortgages kind of have a qualitative and a quantitative element to them. You know, quantitatively right now, there's many people who have mortgage notes that are only costing them, you know, three to 4%. And the risk-free rate with investments is over 5%. So you, you literally, because what's happened with interest rates over the last six months or so, you can literally beat the banks with risk-free rates. Um, but there's an element, and I get it. I, I get this, and it, it might not make mathematical sense, but it makes all the sense in the world because with retirement planning, um, you know, there's something to be said about having a clear conscious and being lean and mean and not having any mortgage debt hanging over your head. And uh, to each their own to a certain degree. I used to be big time, like a Dave Ramsey type zealot of, you know, pay, throw all your cash money at your house and pay your mortgage off. Um, but now with where, where we see interest rates at, it just doesn't make a, a, a ton of sense. But uh, not a day passes where we don't sit down with a, with a retiree and um, we start gaming out their retirement and the elephant in the room is it could be husband wife and and the husband is 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 heck bent on paying the mortgage off uh and he doesn't care about the mathematics surrounding what the risk free rate is and what his yield on his mortgage are and and, and that's just a, a goal and a dream and something uh an itch that he needs to scratch and look to each their own you know my own wife you know the the, the book says uh, emergency fund needs to be 3 to 6 months um and my wife needs a heck of a lot more than that in, in cash reserves uh, to sleep well at night. And I'd say the same <laughs> thing about a mortgage. One more piece of food for thought as you talk about tax code, though. Most people have not been getting, and this could be one of the reasons why people are so eager to, to pay their mortgage off too, Keith. People have not been getting a mortgage interest rate deduction on their taxes mm -hmm. uh, since Trump's tax reform. Well, Trump's tax reform subsets in 2024. So when that happens, most people believe we will go back to where we were prior to Trump's tax reform, meaning the standardized deduction will drop to $12,000. So you'll begin receiving a tax break for what are called SALT taxes, state and local taxes, mm -hmm. as well as your mortgage interest. So now that mortgage interest becomes tax deductible. Um, so it's something to hear again, you're, you're peering out at the horizon, not just making a dis decision purely on the, the, you know, the environment right this minute, but you're looking at what, uh, where the, the needle could move in the next two, three years. So, uh, with that in mind, carrying a little mortgage debt is, is not nearly as bad. Um, not really as bad as some people might, might chalk it up to be. Yeah, that's, you know, a really, really good point. And one of the other things when we're on a topic of real estate, which is, of course, one of my favorite topics. Um, you know, a lot of people, folks that want to come down here or they're planning for retirement, I see this more often than not. What they want to do is they want to get in the market now before things get more expensive. And that's true. You know, real estate here has appreciated, you know, just like everywhere else in the country over, you know, during that COVID period. But even before then, we saw a lot of appreciation and people want to get in the market now. So what they'll do is they'll come down and they'll want to buy a rental property and then they'll turn around and want to do an Airbnb, VRBO, whatever it is with it to help pay for it while they can come down and use it for a couple of weeks out of the year. And I know you have a, a, a position on this as well. Well, you know, you're the guy I would ask for advice on that front, but uh, what I tell people who are moving down here, right? You were asking before, where, where do you live, Adam? And I said, Daniel Island. Are you, you're in Johns Island or are you up in uh, Mount Pleasant? Mount, Mount Pleasant. Pleasant. Okay, got it. You've, you get this. Like literally the temperature and tone and the feel of Johns Island 
compared to James Island, compared to West Ashley, compared to the peninsula, compared to Mount Pleasant, compared to Somerville, North Charleston, Daniel Island. It's like a completely different world. You cross one bridge, you got a completely different vibe. Couple that with one hour north of us is Pauly's Island in Georgetown in the, the South Grand Strand of Myrtle Beach. Hour and a half south of us, you're in Beaufort, in Bluffton, in Hilton Head, in Savannah. Every one of these places has a completely different feel, even though they're separated by a bridge or an hour on uh, Route 17. It has a completely different vibe and feel. I'll, I'll, I'll give you my parents as an example, right? So my parents, as soon as they caught a glimpse of their first grandbaby, um, they said, I, I, I'm got to be here i got to be near this little thing it's just completely got me wrapped around uh his little finger so they rented a airbnb or a vrbo on sullivan's island well you and i know sullivan's island my mom was a professional clown growing up my dad was a mechanical engineer never made for than more than sixty thousand dollars a year it was a little outside their price point over on sullivan's island but they had an opportunity to rent there and by renting there for two or three months they became tourists of Charleston real estate, right? So they they toured uh, Shadow Moss in, in, in West Ashley. They toured Del Webb up in Somerville. They toured some condos down near Folly Beach. They got a good hard look at Mount Pleasant and some different neighborhoods in, in Mount Pleasant. Ultimately, where they wound up was Pauly's Island. So I, I would, I know this might fly in the face of you, you conducting a real estate transaction. And the mere fact that you said that, Keith, tells me that your heart is in the right place. You want your buyers to buy right, not just transact a, a piece of business that they grow to regret. But as small as South Carolina is, and I think people from New York and Connecticut think, you know, you come down here, everyone says y'all and eats grits and everyone's the same. <laughs> not even close, right? I, I always kid that people who live in Myrtle Beach, and, and here again, People who live in Conway and people who live in uh, Calabash are completely different than people who live in Merle's Inlet and Pauly's Island. It, so, but but the north side, uh, Myrtle Beach folks, I feel like there's a lot of Yankees who have no interest in acclimating to the south and saying, y'all, they just want to golf and live in warm weather and not shovel snow. You go down here to South Carolina, or excuse me, South Carolina, Charleston, you have more transplants that are charmed by the Southern way of living. Uh, you know, they want to go to the oyster rows. They want to make their own pimento cheese, what have you. They like saying y'all. Uh, and then you go down to, to the Hilton head area and it's kind of a little bit of combination of both you get. And of course I'm being tremendously stereotypical. Um, but I don't even know how I got started on this. My recommendation is get a feel for all these different islands and all these different areas because they are very, very different. And there's different groups of people in these areas. Don't just uh, go online and read an article by Condé Nast saying, I want to live in Charleston. And then next thing you know, you're on the wrong side of town or on the wrong side of a bridge. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a very nuanced place to live. It's a wonderful place to live. Um, but certainly no different than any other community. There's a very different feels to different parts of town. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. And, you know, when you talk about, you know, the different locations and, and, and the different vibes that you get everywhere, I mean, that's part of the edification process for so many people that come here. People, as we talked about off camera before, people become somewhat infatuated by the idea they, they they romanticize living in south carolina or charleston or one of these other you know places you just mentioned you know whether it's hilton head or whether it's greenville or, or wherever it happens to be and you know kind of a reality takes over at that point because there is an adjustment from where you're coming from to here yes the cost of living is different it's definitely lower taxes are definitely lower there are a lot of benefits to that but it's the charm that really what I see brings most people in. And when they go ahead and they, they want to get in the game, um, they want to purchase now for a future event, them moving here, retiring here, 
it's not a bad strategy to do that, to, to purchase something and, and do that. But you have to be very, very, very aware of all the different rules and regulations that govern these Airbnbs and the and VRBOs, because each municipality, not city, but municipality actually will regulate how you can do it. As a and fact, the property the- tax, mind you, as you know, you know, a rental property or an investment property. Uh, I just mentioned South Carolina has some of the lowest property taxes in the entire nation. It works out to about a half a percent of your home's value uh, if it's your primary residence. Um, but if it's a rental property or an investment property, it is not cheap. It's double what you would typically pay uh, for your primary residence. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is. And, and basically what I tell people, it's, you know, it goes from 4% to 6%, but that's on paper. What they don't tell you is that you lose those credits in the municipality for things like the school and the fire department and the police department, which really almost gives you an effective rate of almost 10%. Okay. So mm-hmm. you really need to be conscious uh, of, you know, all of that stuff. And there's some strategies that you can use. And again, I'm not a, an accountant or an attorney, but I can tell you what I've witnessed through my clients throughout the years that are purchasing property here and how they will put properties into different entities and and do things like that, that minimize the overall cost, because at the end of the day, it may come out of their uh, taxable income. But let's swing back because we're we're getting deep into the real estate stuff here. I want to really talk more about the the benefits that that you see when people are moving to South Carolina, regardless of what city it may be. Yes, we talked about the lowest, you know, property taxes, and and that really depends on the county too because they all change. But the other benefits that that people can enjoy while they're they're moving here to South Carolina once they're here in South Carolina. Well, we t- we touched on on some of the biggest ones, and that is just you, you mentioned. You know, there's something charming about saying Charleston. It just kind of rolls off your tongue. And I think some of these people still uh, re- remember the movie Casablanca and everything. So, uh, you know, um, main drivers are going to be access to culture and entertainment. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons why we're seeing a major influx, I think it's 50 people per day are moving to South Carolina and two thirds of them are over the age of 50. I think one of the big reasons surrounding that is Charleston has become kind of a boom town for millennial yuppies, right? There's more job opportunities down here. People are calling the Charleston Harbor Silicon Harbor right. because of all of technology startups that are getting started. We've got Boeing and Volvo Uh, And BMW, bigger Fortune 500 employers are coming down here and go figure, um, you know, young people who need well, good paying jobs are following those big employers. Those young people are making babies and then go figure how quickly their grandparents, grandma and grandpa see, get a glimpse of that baby. No different than what happened with my mom and dad. And they go, boy, what the heck am I doing shoveling snow up here in the Northeast? There's nothing for me here anymore. I also think there's an element that people think of Florida like it's, uh, you know, purgatory. It's heaven's waiting room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they watch their parents pass away there uh, and they just don't want to, you know, feel that same. And not 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 to say people aren't retiring in Florida. They're retiring there in, in droves. But South Carolina all of a sudden starts to look a little bit more attractive for those two reasons. So certainly the charm uh, culture. We've got some of the best restaurants in the entire. We're spoiled almost, Keith. Like when I go oh. out to eat in other cities, I'm like. This is terrible. Like the 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 <laughs> standard, the bar of our cuisine here is set so high uh, that it almost ruins eating out in other cities. Um, and of course, we've got kind of all of the um, you know cultural things that come with the peninsula. There's constantly every single month. There's a different. Um, you've got seaweed and uh spoleto there's always some sort of thing going on if, if yeah, second I, sundays you've got second it. sundays there's always live music there's, there's a mm. show to take in um so we, we we check all of those boxes uh and then you've got the plantations if you're a golfer so the best golf in the entire world is here like i could just carry on and on and on there's so many ways to keep yourself entertained here uh you're close to the beach you can jump in a car for two hours you could be up in the mountains hiking 
it, it really geographically just checks all the boxes. Um, yeah. Taxes are another one. People want to make sure they're not going to overpay in taxes. And just like I said, I think South Carolina is one of the most tax friendly states in the entire nation. Uh, another big one is health care. And health care, uh, if you I think Wallet Hub did a study and they said that South Carolina was one of the worst states in the entire nation for medical outcomes. Uh, and that factors in life expectancy and obesity statistics. You and me both know that if you go inland in South Carolina, there are some communities in some areas that probably skew that data. Uh, we've got MUSC right here, right here in Charleston. People travel from all across the South to seek treatment at MUSC. It's one of the best medical facilities on the face of the earth. Uh, and then I'd also argue to say that, you know, these very same people who want to get a taste of, of the South and live in Charleston, South Carolina, some of them are highly trained and wonderful doctors. So I, I think the medical care um, equation that might get a bad, bad name with some, you know, wallet hub studies and such, uh, the tide is changing there. Right. And I think if you're in a coastal community, you can get some of the best medical care and medical attention uh, in the entire nation. I think as you go inland in some of the areas, um, what do they call it? The corridor of shame and some of the areas that that have been almost forgotten in the path of, of progress and development um, might not be getting the best care out there. But look, a rising tide lifts all ships as the medical care in Charleston and Myrtle Beach and Hilton Head improves and Savannah improves. Um, you know, that's going to ultimately bleed into the the areas that are a little bit more inland. So, um, you know, I will say this, though, I will say this, right? And you've bore witness to this being in the real estate industry for, for two, two plus decades. South Carolina used to, used to, I'm talking 10 years ago, be a haven to buy real estate cheap. Right. I don't think that equation exists anymore. We're not like a bargain discount residential market anymore. Right. Yeah, no, when I first got here, which was 10 years ago, I remember going to the beach and looking at the beautiful beach homes there on the Isle of Palms. And I did a little bit of research and I'm like, do you buy that house for $700,000? I mean, I came from Southwest Florida, from Naples, where a house like that on the beach is going for a couple of million dollars. So yeah. to me, you know, I had that aha moment i'm like i need to buy real estate here in south carolina because it's cheap right now and will it ever go up i have been you know through these cycles before yes it definitely is going to go up now you mentioned two different things that i want to talk about real quick wallet hub they're one of my favorite sources for information and i actually did a video not too long ago well i did one for last year and and um, i didn't do it again this year but wallet hub actually has named Charleston as the best city to retire in for now two years in a row. Oh, okay. is that right? Two, yes, the best country, best city in the country to retire. I wish, in. I got to tell you, I want to shake the hand with the person who does the PR for the city of Charleston proper because I think Condé Nast had it as like the number one little city in the world, not just in America, in the world yeah. for like 11 years in a row. Yeah. And I, whoever's palm they're greasing, they're doing a wonderful job of it. <laughs> but I well, mean, it, it, let, let's just say that there's no, you know, behind the scenes uh, backroom dealing going on here. I, I can't agree with them more. Right. Like, so I, I bounced around the country. I grew up in Connecticut, lived in Philly during college, lived in Park City, Utah. Um, and the reason I landed on Charleston, because it, it, it had a, a vibe comparable to the best parts of all those different places, right? You mm -hmm. have your history like you do in Philly. If you want to walk down a cobblestone street and feel like you're walking around colonial America, you could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it has this small town, you know, kind of city feel like I felt out in Park City, Utah. So, um, it, you know, that was well earned. Yeah, I kind of you know, secretly I, I, like we started the podcast off or started the video off with. I kind of secretly hope we would stop winning all of these accolades and awards so uh, we can fly under the radar for a few years. No, absolutely. And, and, and travel and leisure magazine, the same thing they've been, you know, and it's the readers, not the magazine. They've been doing polls and, and the polls have reflected in the last, I think, nine years straight. It's getting embarrassing, frankly, that 
Charleston is the number one place to visit. Okay. So that's, that's a little bit different. This is off topic. And, and I don't know why I'm going to bring this up, but I have like no filter. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that I was so charmed about Charleston, um, most places in this country, certainly in the Northeast, New York, Philly, big cities, the first question that a stranger will ask of you, guess what people ask of you up there? Like when you meet someone at a cocktail party, what do you, what do, you do for work? What do you do? Yeah. Have you noticed down here that that is not an individual's identity? Like I, I, I've, I've hung out with individuals for like months on end, I couldn't tell you what they do professionally, right? I can tell you that they're a good, you know, family man. And uh, I can tell you they like playing basketball and they like, you know, surfing. And um, but I couldn't tell you what they do professionally. It's tremendously refreshing. It's tremendously refreshing. That was one of the things that I really, really loved about this place. You know, it's funny that you bring that up because, you know, when I first meet clients that, that are coming in from out of state, and I had basically the same conversation with them. You know, you may go to a social event, okay, a gathering, it may be an oyster roast, maybe a cocktail party. And what I hear more often than not is not what is it that you do, the question, but the question is, what kind of boat do you have? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. And there's more boats per capita here than I think most of the, the rest of the country. But, you know, that's that's a big pastime here. People are always wanting to fish. They want to go, you know, to the islands. And that's something that if you haven't done, you know, when you come here, is that we have barrier islands that, yes, you can get to by cars, but there's also some that you can only get to by boat. And those are fantastic. When you do that, you can pull your boat up there, you anchor and, you know, sit there and have a nice cool drink and enjoy lunch. And it's a fabulous thing. If you want to know more about that, let me know. But one thing I do want to touch on, because I know we're, we're getting a little bit short on time, because you mentioned this a couple of times now. You talked about your parents coming here and, and renting the VRBO. Um, a lot of times, okay, and, and I actually have a website, and I'll tell you what the name of it is in just a minute. But when people move to places like Florida, especially now, I was a broker down there. I had a, uh, a brokerage there. And I also had one simultaneously up in Blue Ridge, Georgia. And that was very strategic because what I found was happening where people were coming down, they wanted to retire in Florida. And it's the two of them. And they want to buy a 6,000 square foot house. And I scratch my head and I, I have to ask the question, why do you want to buy a 6,000 square foot house? It's two of you and you're retired. Well, because Bobby's going to be coming down with the kids and then Susie's going to be coming down. We need to have enough room for everybody. So when they get here, you know, everyone has, you know, their space and they can spread out and they can go swimming and everything else. I'm like, well, far be it for me to tell you how to spend your money. If that's what you like, let's go ahead and do that. So they do. Two to three years later, maybe four, I'll get a phone call. Hey, Keith, can you sell this sucker? I'm like, <laughs> why? And they're like, well, because Bobby doesn't come down and visit us anymore. Yeah. And Susie, she got a job in California and they don't want to come visit grandma and grandpa all the time. So I was like, okay, sure. I could sell it. Where are you going? And they're like, well, we really don't know. I'm like, okay, well, how about Blue Ridge, Georgia? And they're like, hmm, that's an idea. You know, that, the mountains, it seems cool during the summers. And well, we'll be halfway back to where we came from. So it's easier to get to them and go visit without living in the same town. So, yeah. yes, my website's called halfbackers.com. Yeah, so that's many a I, there's a name for that. Yeah. And I think that's probably another reason South Carolina is on the map, perhaps. So we get so many people coming from Florida. OK, where they went to retire initially in, in Florida and then they discovered, well, it's too hot. It's too expensive. The kids don't want to visit us. They don't want to go, go to Disney World each and every time they come down here. They want, you know, someplace different. They want to come and they heard about Charleston, which we have a temperate climate. Uh, actually, today, you know, we woke up in the 40s. That's a big difference from Florida, where I know because I have a sister down there. I spoke to her this morning, and they're in the seventies. And then, if that's what you want year round, that's okay. But a lot of people not only do they want the the change of climate, 
they want to be more uh, engaged, okay, more yeah, active. I'm and there's so many things here, like you mentioned before, to do. You know, even if it was just going to restaurants, you could never eat your way through all the restaurants here. Well, two things. What my sister's down in Western Florida, yeah, and around Christmas time, it doesn't feel like Christmas when it's 80 degrees out. But um, there's something to be said about if you build it, they will come, right? So um, I know one of the key things a lot of retirees, they want to be a part of their grandkids' lives. And they have this utopian dream to build, buy the big old house. That way there's a room for everyone to sleep in. But look, your grandkids are living their own life. They're not going to come live in your basement uh, or live in your, your, your guest room um, you know, once a month. But I will say this. Every now and again, I'll have a client and they'll go, boy, my grandkids never, you know, they never visit me. And it turns out they live in the middle of nowhere with no nightlife, no culture, nothing enjoyable. So if you build it, they will come, right? So if, if you've got it within your budget, and you want your children and your grandkids to be a bigger part of your life. Funny thing about beach houses, they have a knack for luring people to them. <laughs> Funny thing about houses with docks and boats. Funny thing about living near the peninsula so you could jump in an Uber and get down to the nicest restaurants in the entire world in five minutes. So if you build it, they will come. Uh, I think that's an important thing. If you want to be a part of your kids and your grandkids' lives, you need to situate yourself in an area that you love, of course, because they're not going to be a part of your life that much. But if you build this awesome emerald castle on the hill, uh, people will be a little more prone to visit you. No, that, absolutely. And I always give this warning to folks that are doing exactly what you just mentioned. I tell them, don't make it too nice because then they won't leave. That's right. Okay. Eaglets. <laughs> e eaglets put thorns in their nest and they push the little eaglets out of the nest. That way they don't get too comfortable. Exactly. Exactly. Well, listen, we need to wrap things up here today, but Adam, I definitely want to get back and have another conversation with you. you you've got so much knowledge and, and so much apparent talent in this as well that, you know, I think you would be um, a fantastic resource for people that I deal with on a regular basis. That is people that are retiring or thinking about retiring here to South Carolina. Absolutely. Well, like, like you said at the beginning, please, by all means, take us up on this little book offer. Uh, you can reach out to Keith's team or our team. Our website's retireyall.com, retireyall.com, which is a term you got to get comfortable saying when you move down here. Usually people start by saying you all, and then it slowly just draws into y'all in short order. <laughs> uh, but go to retireyall.com, get our book or reach out to Keith's people. And we're happy to give the book out. Um, and I think it does a pretty good job of covering similar to our conversation, but maybe in a little bit more detail on some of the nerdy, geeky finance stuff, uh, the things you need to get right in order to live an abundant retirement down here in South Carolina. And come on down. I was kidding about the whole Yankees, damn Yankees thing. Um, let me let me end with one thing, Keith. Um, before I moved here, I thought because I grew up in Connecticut, school in Philly, I thought the only people that were going to hire my little rinky dink financial planning company were going to be fellow fast talking Yankees, right? Because I didn't speak with a drawl and I operated at a quicker pace. And I never thought the blue blooded Charlestonians and South Carolinians would, would hire me because I, I didn't speak Bubba to my surprise, my first year in business I was hired by nothing but native Charlestonians and native South Carolinians. And all of the, the fast talking city slicking Yankees would say things like, well, you haven't been in business down here very long. You know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to wait till you, you're a little more established. Right. Whereas these individuals with pluff mud in their blood and American by birth, but Southern by the grace of God mm -hmm. were hiring me based off of a handshake they wanted to know about my values. They wanted to know about my beliefs. And they they put a little trust in me. And that's something I will never, ever forget. And when I hear people, um, you know, kind of make fun of South Carolina, like, oh, they fly the Confederate Flederate flag down there, even though you know that that's not true. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, or they, 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 they call us unenlightened Southerners mm -hmm. and such. I very quickly defend her because uh, the natives here, with all the development that's happened around them, have such a tremendous 
attitude. Maybe they talk b- about us behind our backs, but from my, from my vantage point, they get it. They go, look how wonderful it is here. It was only a matter of time before more people found out about it. And it was mm-hmm. only a matter of time before it started getting to develop the way it was. So uh, some of those misnomed, misnomers about South Carolina being very blue blooded and, you know, a good old boy network. Uh, I, I'm living True. proof. This yeah. state has taken me with open arms and it's allowed me uh, to take my little business from a three in one printer and a laptop to now, you know, offices all across the coast and tons of employees and tons of clients. So uh, I love this state. And uh, God bless South Carolina. God bless America. (laughs) There you go. That's fantastic. Now, if you would like to get Adam's book, you can also get it right along with my relocation guide. Okay. And I talk about not only Charleston, but the entire low country. So if you want to get that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description below this video. All you have to do is click on it. Just give me your name and your email address. So we know where to send it to. And it will appear magically in your inbox for you. Of course, if you have any questions in the meantime, you could reach out to me as well or Adam. Um, I'm going to put his his contact information in the description as well. Adam, thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure. We have to do this again without a doubt. And the only thing I guess I could probably say right now is bye, y'all. Yes. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate it.